Good morning, and welcome to St. John the 23rd's weekly Mass as we celebrate Le Sioux House. As we begin our worship this morning, please take a moment of silence to prepare your hearts. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my word, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Ezra. At the time of the evening sacrifice, I, Ezra, rose in my wretchedness. And with cloak and mantle torn, I fell on my knees, stretching out my hands to the Lord, my God. I said, my God, I am too ashamed and confounded to raise my face to you. Oh, my God, for our wicked deeds are heaped above our heads and our guilt reaches up to the heaven. From the time of our fathers, even to this day, great has been our guilt. And for our wicked deeds, we have been delivered up, we and our kings and our priests, to the will of the kings of foreign lands, to the sword, to captivity, to pillage, and to disgrace, as is the case today. And now, but a short time ago, 
mercy came to us from the Lord our God, who left us a remnant and gave us a stake in his holy place. Thus our God has brightened our eyes and given us release, relief in our servitude. For slaves we are, but in our servitude our God has not abandoned us. Rather, he has turned the goodwill of the kings of Persia towards us. Thus he has given us new life, to raise again the house of our God and restore its ruins. And he has granted us a fence in Judah and Jerusalem. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus summoned the twelve and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He said to them, take nothing for your journey, neither walking stick, nor sack, nor food, nor money, and let no one take a second tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. And as for those who do not welcome you, when you leave that town, shake the dust from your feet in testimony against them. Then he 
Then they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and curing diseases everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. I get, I get lines from songs stuck in my head easily. Um, this week, I've been walking around with a line in my head from a song that was written many years ago uh, by my friend, uh, Brian Gundersdorf. He wrote this song called Burned. And there's a part in it where he sings this line over and over again. He says, you better do something important with your time. Better do something important with your time. Just keeps repeating that. And then finally, after repeating it for a while, he finally resolves it by saying, you better do something important with your time because you're better off burned than wasted. His point is that we only have so much time on this earth to do something with ourselves make our mark, to use our talents. Better that we try as hard as we can and fail than that we never try at all. You better do something important with your time. No time to lose, only so much time left. I'm sure you guys have felt like that at one time or another. You only get this part of your life once. Only one shot at making these years amazing. Only one opportunity to achieve whatever it is you want to achieve on, on the sports field or, or in the classroom or wherever. Only one chance to lay a good foundation, to get into a good college, to prepare for a good career, to establish a good life. Only one opportunity. So what bold thing are you going to do? What massive, stressful, seemingly impossible task are you going to take on? You better do something important with your time because you're better off burned than wasted. Well, Jesus wants us to do something important with our time, too. He sends the twelve out to proclaim the kingdom of God. Telling them that they shouldn't waste a second on any place that doesn't receive them well. Keep moving. Keep working. Make every step count. That's what he says to the twelve. And what he wants for us is nothing less. We're to live his love in the world. We're to be beacons of his light. And as Christians, we're only, go, we're only given so many years, not only to work out our own salvation, but to lead others by our word and example into the kingdom. Doesn't that feel like a lot of pressure sometimes? And that's because far too often we get it in our heads that what this means is that we have to do something extraordinary. That that's what Jesus wants of us, to be something extraordinary. You know, we have to, we have to lead a mission to Africa or, or perform a miracle or something. We have to be larger than life. We start to think of our calling as disciples of Jesus in the same way we think about our secular callings, and it kills us. You often hear about 
actors or musicians or athletes or, or even executives at, at billion-dollar corporations who devote all their time and energy to their craft and who do some extraordinary things as a result, but who then suffer personally with broken marriages, estranged relationships with children, lack of real friendships, and a lot of loneliness. Yes, if we direct all of our energy, all of our talent towards doing larger than life things, we may amaze people with what we can achieve. But at what cost? Today is our Lasso House Mass. Hello, Lasso House. St. Therese of Lasso said, Holiness consists simply in doing God's will and being what God wants us to be. That's our mission. That's how we're supposed to spend our time, doing God's will. But what's remarkable is, is how St. Therese understood that. St. Therese is famous for her little way. She knew that anything she did would only be good because of God's grace. So, she didn't try to do extraordinary things. Instead, she tried to do ordinary things with extraordinary love. She didn't have to go to the ends of the earth to show her faithfulness. She didn't have to meet the outsized expectations of, of other people or even of herself. All she had to do was to love the people around her and serve them as best she could. That's it. She said, God would never inspire me with desires which cannot be realized. So in spite of my littleness, I can hope to be a saint. Doing something important with your time is so much simpler than we often make it out to be. And yet, in some ways, that almost makes it harder. Sometimes it's easier to go on a mission to Africa or to try to perform a miracle than it is to love the people right in front of us, especially when those people are cruel or selfish or boring. Sometimes we'd rather go out and do extraordinary things just to keep from having to go home. But it's in and through those normal, everyday interactions that we show what we're really made of. It's by loving the people around us each day, whoever they are, whoever's been placed in our path, even when it becomes tedious or annoying. That's how you do something important with your time. That's how you live a life that matters. It's how you become a saint. It's not through major accomplishments that wow people and make everyone think you're amazing through small, simple acts of kindness and sacrifice that every one of us can do, but that we so often avoid. It's through being little, just like St. Therese says, but having a big heart that God will fill over and over again. As hard 
as those small acts of kindness can be, God will always give us the grace to carry through with them, if we're willing. Let go of the need to make every second count. In the end, it's not going to matter whether you did well on every test, won every game, or even whether you got into the college of your dreams, so much as it will matter whether you were loving and kind to the people around you along the way. Do that, and no matter what the rest of the world thinks, only heaven itself will be able to contain the glory of your accomplishments. Father Almighty, dear brothers and sisters, may every prayer of our hearts be directed, for his will it is that all humanity should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For the Holy Church of God, that the Lord may graciously watch over her and care for her. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peoples of all the world, that the Lord may graciously preserve harmony among them, let us pray to the Lord. For all who are oppressed by any kind of need, that the Lord may graciously grant them relief, let us pray to the Lord. For respect for all human life, from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. For, for vocations to the priesthood and religious life, especially for our seminarian, Matthew Kuleski, Jonathan DeMoyes, Riley O'Sullivan, Luke Hermenter. Let us pray to the Lord. For our St. John community, may, may we be people of love, and compassion, filled with the grace of God, and willing to serve others. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, especially for John Nelson Russell and Michael Alexander, let us pray to the Lord. For the dead, especially Dee Dee, Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. O God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church, for you yourself are the source of all devotion. Grant, we pray, that what we ask in faith we may truly obtain through Christ our Lord.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Psalm 2, Psalm 2, Psalm 2, Psalm 2, are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Welcome to us, Annunciamus Domine, et tua resurrectione constitemus, Domine, Venia. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Therese of Lisieux, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. I'll ask everybody except the members of the Sioux House to take a seat for a moment. stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I have one announcement um, today. For those of you who are attending our November Kairos retreat, there will be a meeting for parents next Tuesday at 5.30 in Campus Ministry. Please ask your parents to respond to the email that was sent to them earlier this week. If for some reason you will not be able to attend this retreat, please let me know as soon as possible because we do have a waiting list. Uh, when I excuse the students, I need all of the freshmen to come forward and sit up here with me for about a minute or two. I want to talk to you about the freshman retreat on Friday, okay? So seniors, you are dismissed. Freshmen, please don't leave the room. <laughs> 